Hello, and welcome to The Beat, a news and talk program brought to you by the Center for Community Media at Worcester State University. I'm your host, Abby Silver, and today we will be speaking with two monks and two nuns visiting Worcester State from Nandrolling Monastery in South India. Can you please introduce yourself for our audience? I am Chiki Dorji from Bhutan, and currently I'm staying there at Nandrolling Monastery in South India. Uh, my name is Tine Chunzum, and I'm uh, originally from Nepal, and I'm also from uh, South India, Mysore. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. I just have a few questions for you. Do you think Le Sangha is important and beneficial? If so, why? Yes, I do think the Sangha community, particularly from lay people's side, is much more important and it plays a greater role in Buddhist world mm -hmm. because they are much more supportive when it comes to uh, giving their helping hands in order for the, the community of monks and nuns to run. Wow. Okay. Um, do you think there are other realms of existence besides the one we're currently in? Yes. There are other, uh, altogether there are six realms uh, besides human realm, there are other five realms. Could you elaborate on the five of them? Uh, the god realm, the demigod realm, the hell realm, uh, hungry ghost realm, and the uh, um, animal realm. Is Donna part of your nature? It is indeed very part of our nature. Um, it probably plays a big role in Lysanga. Um, what is the best way to become liberated through your style of living? The best way to be liberated uh, is through becoming an uh, ordained monk or nun. So in your opinion, what do you think is the best way to become liberated? Uh, I think the best way to become liberated uh, is uh, by mm, practicing the Dharma. The Dharma. Do you think that it's possible to completely eliminate suffering? Yes, I think it is. Could you give some examples of how, um, if we're not accustomed to this lifestyle, how we might achieve that? Most of the newborn babies, and gradually when they come up, they become adult humans. But in every core of our heart, we have the term suffering. And then in order to eliminate that, best way is to get rid of ego or something that is grasping at oneself. Thank you. And now we will hear from two visiting scholars from Nandrolling Monastery in South India. Can you please introduce yourself for our audience? My name is Pemawanda and I am from Bhutan and I also represent from the Nandrolling Monastery which is based in uh, Mysore, South India. And my name is Karma Yangu, and I'm from Nepal, but currently staying in India, South India. Thank you. So why did you choose this lifestyle? In this case, because like, since we are from uh, Buddhist background family, for personally for me, as I have some sickness, that really, that really changed my mind to become a monk. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I think I believe in simple living and high thinking and I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity to study about the ancient text and about the Buddhism. Wow. What is the best way to build inner peace? So when it comes to building an inner peace, so, uh, Buddhism, can, Buddhist, uh, Buddhism can bring a very larger perspective. So Buddhism is more of, more of doing with the mind training and then when it comes to this uh, building a peace, so it is through mind training, through knowing the reality of mind, that can really bring the that can really bring the peace in your mind. Generally, what happens? We are all stuck in the external things, like trying to seize the external things, try to get taste of external things, which keeps on multiplying. But we forget the nature of inner inner things. So, like the Buddhism always gives the teaching of inner well-being or inner well. Sometimes mm -hmm. I consider it's the inner well. Because through inner wealth, that can be, that can bring you the real uh, calmness or peace or whatever we may see. Great.
Can you tell me a little bit about your rigorous nine-year course in Buddhist philosophy that you took to become a Lopan? Uh, in, nunner, in nunnery and monastery, mm -hmm. uh, we have to study uh, about the sutra, tantra, mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, like from morning uh, 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. It's a long day. Yes, it is. <laughs> is Nam drawing a big tourist spot? What is there to do and learn about there? Basically, uh, to be honest, like Namjoli was uh, initially started as a monastery, mm -hmm. but because of its beauty, beauty of peace and beauty of calm, so like gradually as time goes on, during the course of time, it has like now it has become more of a tourist spot. But in tourist spot in a sense that a, a, a city nearby nearby which we call as Bangalore. So like people people from that area they come to they come to the monastery to have kind of relaxing time. So in this way like we have more of Indian tourists. Of course the foreign tourists are also there who comes with one purpose to have to have peace and relaxing time. So in this way we have many tourists or who visits our monastery on a regular basis. It sounds like a beautiful place. Thank you for watching this segment of The Beat. And please remember to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.